Hey sweet friends, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to this week's What's For Dinner. I've got some awesome recipes to share with y'all and this week is extra special. Mississippi anything is my jam. I was judging a book by its cover. So there are two reasons why this video is so special. For one, it is all crock pot recipes. So I am bringing you all of the crock pot inspiration. But for two, you are not gonna have just crock pot inspiration from me, but you are gonna have crock pot inspiration from four different videos. This video is a collab with my very best friends, Amber, Mandy, and Mackenzie. These girls are my heart. I absolutely love them. I adore them. With every bit of me, I am so grateful for their friendship. They have been just the biggest blessing to my life and I'm so excited to share their channels with you guys today and their videos. If you do not follow them, make sure you head over and follow them. We are all doing crock pot recipes, so y'all are gonna seriously have all of the inspo, but let's go ahead and jump into this video. Okay, so for tonight's crock pot recipe, we are making Mississippi chicken. Not Mississippi pot roast, although that is one of my all time hands down favorite crock pot recipes. If you have never tried Mississippi pot roast, you need to. So this is the exact same thing except for with chicken. And if y'all remember, this was a while back. I made just regular grilled chicken with the Mississippi um, marinade and it was incredible. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, but in the crock pot, shred it up. I think I'm gonna make some homemade mashed potatoes to go along with it and some green beans. It's gonna be delicious, but let's go ahead and get it cooking. So for this recipe, I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken to my crock pot and then I'm gonna to top it with one packet of au jus gravy, one packet of ranch seasoning mix. If you have the big container, that's about three tablespoons. I'm gonna do half a stick of butter and then the juice from the pepperoncinis as well as like five or six pepperoncinis. You can add however many of those that you want depending on which spice level you like and then pop a lid on it and it's gonna cook on low for about six to seven hours. Okay, so this chicken has been cooking all day. Our house smells amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and shred this chicken up and just kind of let it sit in these juices while we make the mashed potatoes and green beans. Y'all, Bunky and I are trying so hard to wait for the potatoes and green beans, but this is so amazing. It's really hard not to just like keep going back. What you think? Mississippi anything is my jam. Mississippi mud pie. Like. I closed it back. That is so good. I could eat that every single night. It is to die for. And then can you imagine putting it over the mashed potatoes and gravy? Mm. I said gravy. That's gonna be our gravy. Yes. Okay, so for my green beans, I like to kind of get a big handful and then line them up. And I just run a knife through the ends to kind of take off just that side. And then I turn them over, take my knife, kind of get them all situated over here. And then run my knife over it one more time to get the other edge. The French tips. And that is the easiest way to do your green beans. Okay, so we're just gonna take our green beans. Mm. Thank you, B. Oh! Mm -hmm. Maybe. Perhaps. Okay. And we're gonna throw them into boiling water just to kind of blanch them for a couple minutes. Okay, once these are in here for just a couple of minutes, you wanna keep that bright green color in them. We're gonna take them out, dry them off, and then put them into a saute pan with some soy sauce and butter and salt and pepper and garlic and all the things. And I think our potatoes are just about ready to be drained. Okay, to these I'm adding just a splash of soy sauce and then some salt and pepper and that's it. 
Also, I do want to make mention that these are obviously not Mandy and the making green beans. Nobody can beat those, but they are still really good for like fresh green beans. Potatoes are done. I'm going to pop them back here into our pot and then to these we're going to add in all the things. So milk, butter, sour cream, some salt and pepper, and even just a little pinch of Parmesan. Y'all, I have got to invest in a potato masher because I'm still just using my little paper chef gadget. It works, but I definitely need a potato masher. Those pepperoncinis impart so much flavor into the chicken. The most. I'm the Aja gravy mix. Daisy's down here, you know, begging. She already ate dinner. <laughs> For real. Okay, so like I told y'all, I love Mississippi anything, and this to me is equally as delicious as Mississippi pot roast mm. and the chicken we marinated that one time and the Mississippi marinade. It's just all, all around amazing. Yeah. I'm trying to think of just... I feel like this chicken is so versatile. It can yes. be used in many different ways. Oh, you could use like leftovers and make some sort of like a little taco, like a pulled chicken taco. Yeah. Oh, I was man. thinking you could make a good, uh, like a good chicken sandwich with it, oh. like on a roll. Oh, yes, you yeah. can. With some peppers, maybe like some red bell peppers. It's like provolone or Swiss cheese. Mm -hmm. That is a genius idea. Mm -hmm. Look at Bumpy coming in clutch. So definitely recommend y'all making this. It is incredible. One of our favorite dinners and the easiest crock pot recipe ever. And I will say, I feel like the perfect pairing is definitely the mashed potatoes. So for this next crock pot recipe, we are gonna make a taco crock pot hash brown casserole. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be amazing. So to start off, I'm gonna go ahead and brown my ground beef on the stove. And once it's about halfway to three-fourths of the way cooked, I'm gonna add in a couple cloves of garlic and let it cook the rest of the way. Then once it's finished, we're gonna drain off that grease and add it into our crock pot. Next, we're gonna add in one packet of taco seasoning, one can of cheddar cheese soup, one package of shredded hash browns, and then one cup of taco style cheese. We're gonna mix that all together. And then once it's nice and combined, we're gonna add one more cup of that taco style cheese on top. And then we're gonna cook this on high for about two to two and a half hours. So this is not gonna take long at all. If you want to cook this on low, just double the time and do it for about four hours. The great thing about crock pot recipes is you can start them in the morning in your jammies before you even get ready for the day. So ignore my appearance because I have not gotten ready. I did put my earrings in though. But um, I wanted to tell y'all for this recipe, it actually calls for the entire bag of hash browns. I did not put all the hash browns in there because I feel like that was a lot of hash browns to meat mixture. So you can kind of eyeball it and put in there what you think, but I cannot wait to try this. You add hash browns to any recipe and I'm your girl, especially tacos, so I know this is gonna be delicious. Okay, so this has been cooking for exactly two and a half hours. It looks and smells delicious. I haven't told Bunky anything about this recipe. He has no idea what went into it, so it's gonna be like a surprise for him. It's True blind taste test. <laughs> okay, we're actually having this for lunch, so I still haven't gotten ready for the day yet. But I'm so excited to try this. Bunky doesn't love potatoes, but I love them, so I really made this recipe for me. But I still think you're gonna love it. A little hot? Mm hmm. You know what, though? Mm hmm. I was judging a book by its cover because it actually tastes good. Bunky came up to me, he's like, This really? isn't like a pretty food. And I was like, it doesn't have to be pretty to taste good. It's delicious. I saw potatoes going into it and I was already, already discounting it. He was judging. But the potatoes actually really absorb 
the flavor, mm -hmm. they add a nice little texture to it, surprisingly. It's delicious. <laughs> okay, so taco crock pot, hash brown casserole is actually what's for our lunch today. Okay, B's actually adding some salsa to his, and I was thinking of adding like, a little bit of sour cream to mine. Um, and I thought like this would be good with a chip, even though that would be like potato and potato. But Bunky made a good point. The texture that the like hash browns give, that's our favorite part. Yeah. It reminds him. <laughs> well, I think it just reminds me in general of, you know, some people who are out there watching might know about this, but back in, was it in middle school? It was at middle school. It was middle school. In middle school, they used to make this hexagonal shaped, <laughs> right? Yes. It was, a, it was a Mexican pizza, and this is so close to that. That's like, what it tastes like. So if you, if you want to go back. To your childhood. Yeah, you can, uh. You can make this and it'll kind of take you there. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to tell y'all about this crock pot recipe. Be sure your hash browns are frozen. They will thaw in the crock pot. And the reason you want to make sure they are frozen is so that they don't overcook in the crock pot. So I wanted to share that little tip with y'all. Okay, y'all, so for this last crock pot recipe, by the way, Bunky is so excited. He has been looking forward to this all week. We are making a beef stroganoff, which I have never made one of these before. So we're both looking forward to it. The recipe that I have, um, um, calls for like actual I think skirt steak. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use just frozen meatballs that I picked up from Sam's Club to make it even more simple So we're just gonna put everything into the crock pot. So the recipe that I have linked below I am tweaking it just a little bit. but I think it's gonna turn out just as good So let me show you what all we're gonna need Okay, so two hour meatballs. We're gonna add in a good amount of garlic. I have about three cloves here, and then I know y'all will not believe this, but I'm also gonna add in a little bit of onion, and then I'll just pick around it. Next, we're gonna add one can of cream of mushroom soup. I got the one with roasted garlic just to give it a little bit more flavor. Next is one carton of sliced fresh mushrooms, a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm gonna stir that until it's nice and combined, and then I'm gonna pop a lid on for about three hours on high. And then after those three hours, we're gonna add in some sour cream and an entire package of cream cheese. Stir that until it's all nice and smooth and creamy. Pop the lid back on for one hour. So this will cook on high all together for four hours. And then I'm gonna actually make some egg noodles on the sides. So it's gonna be so good. And then dinner will be ready for tonight. Okay, y'all, so we have just about 30 minutes to an hour left. We're actually going camping tomorrow. So we went to the farm to get the camper. So I'm like 30 minutes past due, but this, smells incredible it looks so good so i'm going to go ahead and add in our sour cream and our cream cheese um the recipe calls for a full block of cream cheese but i'm just going to do half just because i don't think we have the full amount a block of love a block of love and then to that we're going to add in the sour cream and i'm just eyeballing this and putting in a good amount I'm gonna stir this, let it get nice and creamy and rich, and let that cream cheese melt in there. And then while that is doing its thing, we're gonna make some egg noodles. You've been waiting for this. Mm, the decadence. Egg noodles are done. I have them over here in this bowl. Get this little freshening up here. Wow, that looks so good. I'm trying not to fog y'all out. That looks so yummy. And you know this recipe um, mm. called for steak. It's actually sirloin steak, but I chose to do meatballs instead. I really? think it's gonna be really good. I mean, this is gonna be off the hook. I cannot wait to eat this. Well, I would take that on a cold winter day, boo. It's good. It is good. Yay! You really love it? Mm-hmm. And the meatballs are good in there? Oh, yeah. And the mushrooms. There there were onions in there, too. They're probably dissolved by now. It's cooked for so long. Well, I mean, this is right up my alley, so I'm happy about it. And you can serve this over rice or noodles, but I think the egg noodles just like make it so good. Oh yeah, I'll go with the egg noodles, friends. Yeah. Now, if it was the uh, beef that you mentioned, 
That would probably be okay over rice. Yeah. But this right here, this supposed this is traditionally with egg noodles. Okay, I, good. I believe. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. All right, y'all. So that's gonna do it for this week's What's for Dinner Crockpot Edition. I hope you enjoyed it and got lots of great info. Like I told you guys, be sure you go down to my description box and go check out Amber and Mandy and Mackenzie's video so you can get even more inspiration. I know they're gonna be making some great crockpot recipes. I love you. If you are new and coming over from their channel, be sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. We'd love for you to join our family, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, y'all.